Anthony. I'm a counselor at, uh oh, hold on. Where did it work? Okay. <laughs> Does that work? Okay. It works. Um, at a local uh, mat clinic here in Olympia. Um, and I'm also in recovery, coming up on five years clean. Woohoo! That's exciting. So, Daddy, with, with the confidentiality rules and your recovery, how do you handle, like, when you have to deal with clients that are in the same recovery platform that you're in? So the basic rule, the standing rule in any um, treatment modality that I've worked in so far has been uh, if you see somebody in public that you work with or that you know is a client at your facility, um, you cannot approach them, you cannot acknowledge that you know them unless they acknowledge you. And even then you keep it short and simple, like, hi, how are you? Okay, on with my day. Um, if somebody is my friend like on social media and then I see them at the clinic as a client, I immediately remove them okay. off my friends list. And it's just a matter of ethics and it's just a matter of, you know, um, you don't ever want somebody worrying that their personal information is being looked at by somebody that they know outside of treatment. So That's, that makes sense. Yeah. And then so now that you are in a position of caring for other people, how do you maintain maintain your own recovery? What does your own recovery look like? So that's a hard one. Um, for me, working in the harm reduction modality of treatment right now um, in my facility, and but also working a program of abstinence in my personal life, um, I have to keep that separate. I have to keep work at work and my recovery, my recovery, and I got to make sure and take time for both. Um, a lot of mistakes that young counselors make when they first come into the field, um, if they're in recovery, is they allow their job to become their daily recovery. Especially if you're running groups or, uh, you know, working in a, a treatment facility where you're actually talking about recovery with people, it's very easy to be like, well, I already did two groups today based on this, this, and this, so I'm going to go ahead and let my own program slide tonight, and I'm just going to relax at home. So it's really good to keep that stuff separate and... Uh, for me, I practice that daily. I let work be work and my own recovery be my own recovery. Sometimes they overlap. Yeah. So sometimes you see people at meetings that, you know, are on your client list. And if that's the case, you just, you know, for me, I choose at those meetings to just not share usually and just kind of keep my own personal stuff to myself. That makes sense, actually. I went one of the things that I just read was talking about um, having your confidentiality, your anonymity barrier crossed when a client sees you so it's also a protection for yourself to not share i would think well in meetings and stuff um if you've got any amount of clean time like that's significant um you'll hear people all the time especially newer people say oh yeah i know him and they think they know you and they think you know they know your story and so you have to be really careful with what you share about in those meetings because if you're at work and you see one of those clients walk by and they're talking with their counselor like oh yeah well denny just shared the other day that he was involved in a drive-by shooting, you know, years ago or something like that, you know, and I'm just saying, I'm speaking generally. I'm not admitting to anything. Yeah, there was no <laughs> nothing held against you in the court of law. <laughs> but uh, I'm just saying, like, you know, a meeting is supposed to be a safe space to be able to share whatever you want. But I find that in those moments, if I see somebody from, like, my treatment facility in, in a meeting, I'll just generally keep quiet. And if it's something I really need to talk about, I'll just call my sponsor. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, our job is to guide not to tell people what to do. Um, with that guidance comes failure. Um, but every now and then you'll get that little success story, that one that says, hey man, thank you for helping me. I just got my kids back. Yeah. I just got my job back. Um, I just moved off the streets into my own apartment for the first time in my entire adult life. Um, and that makes it all worth it. And the second thing, self-care. Self-care is absolutely important. Get yourself connected with a good facility if you're working there that will take care of you and your team. Um, if you're not and you're not feeling taken care of, find somewhere else because that's been the game changer for me was connecting with a, an entity that literally takes care of us and makes sure that we're doing okay, makes sure that we're taking time off, um, gives us more than enough time off if we need it. So, yeah, self-care. Leave work at work. Once you get home, be at home. That's good. Yeah. Thank you, Danny. I really appreciate you taking the time. It's good.